Now students, it's a turn for question number 29. If the mole fraction of urea in its aqueous solution is 0.1, then the molality of the solution will be. So in this particular case, the important thing that's given here is mole fraction and that mole fraction is 0.1. Now you need to find out molality of the solution. So first of all, you should know that mole fraction is representing the fraction of the moles present in a particular solution. And if I talk about the mole fraction of urea in that aqueous solution that is 0.1, so definitely the mole fraction of the water in that particular solution would be 1 minus 0.1 that is 0.9. So we can simply say that as per the given thing that chi for urea, chi is mole fraction, my fraction of urea is 0.1. And that's why the mole fraction of water would be 0.9. That is representing the fraction of the mole. And we are just assuming that whole one mole is present there of the solution. That in this case, the moles of urea would be 0.1. And similarly, the moles of water those we are assuming here 0.9. So we have the moles here what we need to find out molality. What's the formula for the calculation of molality? Molality is a concentration term and it is equal to the moles of solute divided by the mass of solvent and one important thing that should be in kg you might be knowing now molality you need to find out so moles of the solute solute is urea its mole are already given 0.1 should be divided by mass of the solvent we have the moles of water how do we find out the mass of water the mass of water would be equal to moles multiplied by its molar mass and that molar mass is 18 gram per mole. So very simple this is the mass of water in gram. Now I'll just write here this is 0.9 into 18. This is in grams but we need this value in kgs. So just divide this value by 1000. So this 1000 will come here. Is it okay? Now just find out the value of the molality. If you solve this part, you will find out the value is 6.17 molal and that is the answer for this particular question. So I'm just marking here the correct answer where it's given. Yes, it's given here in option 2. That's why the answer for this question is option 2. Now, the turn is there for the next question. The question number 30. If an enzyme contains 0.1% of calcium ions by mass, then the minimum molecular mass of the enzyme will be. It means in this particular question, you need to just find out the minimum molecular mass of that enzyme in which 0.1% of calcium ions are present. So the condition that you should know here that if you're talking about the minimum molecular mass, first we'll focus on the minimum molar mass. For minimum molar mass of the enzyme, there should be at least one mole of the calcium ion that should be present in one mole of the enzyme, right? On the basis of this, we will solve it. So I'll just write here the condition that for minimum molar mass of the enzyme, one mole of enzyme should contain at least of Ca2 plus ions or the calcium ions. Now as per the question 
point 1 gram because as per the question there is point 1 percent calcium and it means if you have 100 gram of enzyme then definitely 0.1 gram of calcium ions are present there. So, I can simply write it 0.1 gram of calcium ions are present in 100 gram of enzyme. Now, we are comparing these two quantities and if I talk about the 1 mole of calcium ion, 1 mole of calcium ion has the molar mass 40 gram per mole and that is also given in the question in terms of atomic mass 40 u that is why. So, 40 gram of calcium ions would be present in 100 divided by 0 0.1 into 40 and if you solve this you will find out that this value is 40 thousand gram it means that is the mass of the enzyme now if this is so it means the molar mass of the enzyme would be forty thousand gram per mole and what would be the molecular mass on the basis of this molecular mass of the enzyme would be 40,000 U. Is it clear? Now, on the basis of this, I am just going to choose the correct option. Where the correct option is given? Yes, this is option 2 and that is why option 2 becomes my correct answer after this. It is a turn for the next question. Question number 31. Maximum number of electrons in an atom that can be associated with the quantum numbers n is equal to 4, l is equal to 1 and m is equal to 0 is. If I talk about the set of the quantum number, we have principal quantum number, azimuthal quantum number and the magnetic quantum number. And for this, there might be only 2 electrons those are associated with these quantum numbers and those two electrons have different spin plus half and minus half spin quantum number would be different for those two electrons. So, in this case the answer is maximum number of the electron in an atom that can have this set of quantum number is 2. So, 2 is given in option 1 and I will choose option 1 as my correct answer. After this, here is the turn for the next question.